even with Mahershala Ali cast as Blade, which they couldn't have found a better actor, I can't see him being able to really sink his teeth into this and it be PG-13. Yeah, I'm going to regret making that joke, probably. Welcome everyone to another episode of A World of Chaos. As always, make sure you have hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon to make sure you're notified of when I drop more content like this, and make sure you leave a like. Also, let me know in the comment section below what you think on the topics we have today. That Atlanta, the hit FX series created by Donald Glover, starring Donald Glover, starring uh, Lakeith Stanfield, ZZ Beats, and Brian Tyree Henry. Um, they are going to be starting filming next month in March of 2021, and they're actually going to be filming back to back seasons three and four. Um, I've heard reports Donald always said he never envisioned the series going past five seasons. It has already been three years since the last time we've had new Atlanta content. Um, so I do hope we can at least get to season five before the 2020s are out. <laughs> um, the, right now they're on a British television show cycle where you have multiple years in between seasons. Um, it's understandable. The series was immensely popular. The first season uh, was nominated for multiple Emmys. Uh, second season was nominated for Emmys. And since the first season, everybody on that show has been booked and busy. Donald Glover has since been in a Star Wars film. He's been in a live action Lion King remake. ZZ Beats has been in a billion dollar box office film that has won multiple Oscars and was nominated for Best Picture in Joker. Lakeith Stanfield, uh, just most recently seen in Jesus and the Black Messiah, has been completely busy. Brian Tyree Henry later this year will be in The Eternals, the next phase of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So everybody on that show is completely busy right now. So to get them back has been probably the hardest thing because they're some of the hottest uh, working actors right now in Hollywood. Uh, I absolutely love the show. I've loved it from the first promo I saw for it. Wow, probably almost about four or five years now. Yeah, about five years now when I first saw the first promo. I've been a huge fan of Donald Glover, Childish Gambino. I'm even more of a fan now when I've actually finally gotten to, to Community, which is where he admits, uh, really uh, became popular from. So the fact that I was a fan of his without even seeing his most popular work before Atlanta kind of speaks to how multi-talented he is. So um, that's actually going to be shooting next month. Um, no news yet on the actual release date. If it will be coming on later this year, which I do hope um, you will find out. So I will make more videos about that. And I'll probably try to see if I can do a recap show, depending on when they release it and how it fits into the schedule. So stay tuned for that. Our next bit of news is covering a rumor that Jennifer Lawrence has been offered the role of Sue Storm, the Invisible Woman, in the upcoming Marvel film, Fantastic Four, directed by uh, the director of the last three Spider-Man films, John Watts. Um, as of right now, it is still a rumor. I personally am a fan of Jennifer Lawrence. Um, she's a multi-time Oscar winner, multi-time Oscar nominated actress. She's been in some important film franchises, including the Fox X-Men film series. Uh, she's been in the Hunger Games series, which is probably what the majority of people would know her from. Um, I wouldn't even say that. She's been in amazing films. One of my favorite films of the last decade, Silver Linings Playbook, uh, Joy. Uh, I mean, the list goes on. So she is one of the biggest A-list actresses out there. I don't want to see her as Sue Storm in the Fantastic Four. Um, it was widely publicated that she did not enjoy her role as Mystique Raven in the Fox film, uh, X-Men film series. The more they came on, um, they actually got her for X-Men's First Class. The first, ser uh, first film of that series is Reboot. Back in 2011, um, she had been nominated for her first Oscar, or she may have won it. I don't know. I'm off. I'm not certain right now. But she was still a, a still up and coming actress. She had just gotten the Hunger Games franchise. She wasn't the Jennifer Lawrence we know her as now. And then the more that series went on, the more popular she got, and the better roles she got, and the more disdain that she showed for being in the makeup chair for six, seven hours. Well, I can see how that would be biting. You knew what that role was when you signed on. If you look at anything from the original X-Men film series about Rebecca Romaine Stamos, 
she hated being in that chair getting the makeup done because that's what was required for that character granted they've made extreme leaps in uh, makeup technology since the year 2000 when rebecca romaine stamos first well i would say rebecca romaine uh first got cast in that role you know what that was that was they even made they even did stuff in the movie series where she wasn't actually raven in the blue paint as much she looked like normal jennifer lawrence um that being said i i, I would just i'm good i'm good um granted yes my fan casting for the fantastic four is john krasinski as reed richards and emily blunt his wife as sue storm i'm good on jennifer lawrence not being in this film series also doing some more rumored fan casting for another film series that has a strong female lead. Amelia Clark from Game of Thrones fame is rumored to be offered the role of Mera uh, in the next uh, Aquaman film, replacing the uh, actress that was on uh, was in the original film and in Justice League, Amber Heard. If you're not familiar with Amber Heard's ongoing uh, legal problems with her ex-husband, Johnny Depp, I don't have enough time to put you through that. But enough said, she's not an actress that a lot of people are looking to hire right now with everything that's come out uh, about that situation with Johnny Depp and the ongoing legal battles they're going through. So I personally was never a huge fan of Amber Heard. I really only knew her from one or two roles and then I knew when she got uh, cast as Mira in Justice League. Um, I do think you could get another actress to do that. I don't see that she did anything inherent that made the role of Mira, at least in Aquaman and what I did see in Justice League, her own. Uh, Amelia Clark does have a history with Jason Momoa Aquaman from Game of Thrones, so they do have a chemistry. I think that would be kind of funny to see Cal Drago and Daenerys Targaryen as husband and wife um, or uh, a couple again on the big screen i think that would actually be pretty funny uh, i am a fan of amelia clark granted i haven't seen a lot of uh, game of thrones everything else i've seen her in uh, i like i think she's a great interview also every time i've seen her uh on any type of talk show interviewing she has a great personality um so i I would be all for this um having her in there it does have somebody that does have i think better chemistry with jason momoa and i do think she's an actress that she really kind of needs another big role she did uh do the terminator genesis film uh, a few years ago and that film while it did have a sequel to or it did have another film in the series with terminator dark fate it was not a sequel to that film she was not brought back as her in, uh, in uh incarnation of sarah connor so i wouldn't mind seeing her in uh in the dc film series but going on with dc who knows when the film will be made but actually keeping with the dc film series we actually did have news that uh zach snyder's just cut of justice league has reportedly cost dc 70 million dollars uh for the reshoots when you add that with the original cost of the film, you're over $370 million between these two Justice League films. Um, I'm gonna make a, a longer video on that. If you're familiar with my work from the Wakanda Black Nerdcast is this page, you have heard me go on multiple rants over the years, especially in the last like five or six months since we got word of the Snyder Cut. Um, I i'm not even gonna touch that but uh reportedly zach snyder didn't actually take any salary for his work in the snyder cut um which i granted some people could have said hey i'm working on this i want to get paid my fair shake um he probably does also have a deal with the dga the directors uh, association guild so he possibly could have turned that salary down um but he's not worth taking a salary for the work he's done on this film also has been reported that some Warner Brothers executives have now come out saying that they did not believe in the Josh Whedon cut of that film. Again, you spend $300 million on a film and you're not comfortable with it. Why didn't you just wait for Zack Snyder to get into a better headspace and then just make the film? You cost yourself 20 or $30 million with those reshoots. Now with these extra uh, scenes you've had to f um, shoot for just the Snyder Cut alone, that's another $70 million. So you spend an extra $100 million on a film where if you just waited 
a few more months, just pushed your release date, you could have had one possibly great film instead of possibly two mediocre films. So we'll see with that. In the upcoming Flash film, that will be starring Ezra Miller, who you've seen as Flash in Justice League, and in his cameo on Crisis on Infinite Earths on the CW Network as his same version of Barry Allen, the Flash. Um, they've actually now um, reportedly, because of the ongoing legal and just bad blood they have going on with Cyborg actor Ray Fisher, they have written his character out. It was originally reported um, he would be a part of this film. They have written him out and they've actually uh, added in the character of Supergirl. And this is actually going to be a new incarnation of Supergirl. Um, they're actually going to be hiring a, a Latinx actress um, by the name of Sasha Calais. I hope I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing that properly. Um, you would most likely know her from the role of Lola uh, Wazlez on The Young and the Restless uh, soap opera. Um, she's going to be the first Latinx uh, incarnation of the Supergirl character in any media. So no cartoon, comic book, or TV show has featured a Latinx version of Supergirl. So you will be breaking around with that. Um, I'm all for inclusion. Um, I really think that DC needs to start doing something to be more progressive. Um, the only African-American character outside of Perry White that has had a huge role in this film series is Ray Fisher and you're not doing anything with him. So I do think you do need to start having a little more inclusion. Um, I do think that they're still playing catch up with Marvel when it comes to a lot of things. Yeah, you beat them first with Wonder Woman over Black Widow, which as of right now still hasn't been released, but you went from Wonder Woman to Wonder Woman 84. Uh, if you wanna know my thoughts on Wonder Woman 84, you should be able to find that video uh, on this page also. Uh, it's keeping with DC and still staying with the actual uh, Latinx uh, inclusion, there are now actually rumors that they are going forward with a Blue Beetle film. Um, if you're not familiar with Blue Beetle, Blue Beetle is an, a very old character, but he's actually a mantle that has been passed on through the decades, through uh, different uh, incarnations. Uh, the original Blue Beetle, Ted Cord, was probably the one that you may have seen in some of the older DC animated TV shows. Um, the current version in the comics, and it has been for around like the last like 10 years, is Jaime Reyes, who is a Latin character. Um, they're actually going to be doing this film with an actual Latin director and writer also. Uh, let me see. So the screenplay is actually uh, written by Mexican-born writer uh, Gareth Dennett. I don't want to mispronounce his last name, Akawalar. And he actually is the uh, co-writer of the uh, Universal Scarface remake. Yes, they're making a remake to Scarface. We all knew that was probably going to come. Uh, he also wrote the uh, Sony film, Miss Bala, which starred uh, Gina Rodriguez from uh, Jane the Virgin fame. Uh, the film actually is going to be di uh, directed by Angel, uh, Angel Manuel Soto. Um, he's actually uh, the uh, writer and director of the uh, City Charm, Charm City Kings uh, series. So they are actually really expanding their uh, Latin uh, inclusion when it comes to looking for not just characters, but also people behind the camera with writers and directors. So as a person of color, I do appreciate them making those strides. So hopefully this uh, hopefully these films get made. Uh, the Flash film itself has been under a lot of turmoil the last couple of years. They're on their third director, uh, Andy Muschietti, uh, who was their director of the uh, It uh, films, It Chapter 1 and 2. And I believe they're on their fourth or fifth screenwriter. Uh, even Ezra Miller uh, tried to write a, a draft of the, the screenplay just to get it made. So hopefully we do at least get to the actual uh, Flash film so we can actually start getting some of this inclusion. For our next topic, we're going to be talking about some Star Wars news. Um, it has been reported that Star Wars has uh, cast the role of Ezra Bridger in the upcoming Ahsoka Sana uh, Disney Plus live action series. The actor that they've actually reportedly offered the role to is Mina Mazad, who you would most likely remember as Aladdin from 2019's live action uh, re remake, Aladdin. Um, I really had a lot of fun with Aladdin. Um, I thought Will Smith did a great job as Genie. 
coming behind Robin Williams is not something easy and to adapt what was an animated film into live action uh, was hard. Um, Guy Ritchie did a, I think he did a really good job with that film. Uh, I think it was a great cast and I really did enjoy Mina's work in that. Um, I am a fan of Ahsoka Sana and uh, I do know of Ezra Bridger as a character. I wasn't heavy into the Clone Wars series, but I do know of him. Um, so seeing another person of color get a prominent role in a great IP, I'm all for. Uh, sticking with Disney, but staying actually going, uh, going to Marvel, um, has been reported that there are not going to be any R-rated films in the Marvel Cinematic Universe outside of Deadpool. Kevin Feige has said that Deadpool 3 will be rated R, continuing the trend that uh, Deadpool started when he was a Fox uh, movie character, which is the only proper way to have Deadpool. You cannot have a PG-rated Deadpool. And I think Brian Reynolds even said, if you're going to go PG, you're not going to have me. The bad news about that is we do have a confirmed Blade film that will be coming out. I can't see how you can do a character that honestly a lot of these films and the MCU as a whole owe a lot of gratitude and to with Blade, that film series was rated R. Uh, the first Blade film came out in 1997 uh, before X-Men and before Spider-Man. So that was the film that really set Marvel on the toll, on the road that they are now. Granted, that was not the MCU, but it was a Marvel's property character that was done right, especially in the first one. Um, the second one is probably the best of the series. I personally like the first one a little more. The third one, it does suffer from being the third one in the series, which it was the worst one in the series, <laughs> um, which actually did star Ryan Reynolds too. So it's kind of funny how that all comes full circle. But no, um, I don't see how you can do Blade PG-13. This character is inherently R. It is dark, it is gritty, it is bloody. You cannot do a vampire, especially this way, PG-13. So I do hope that they do amend this, even with Mahershala Ali cast as Blade, which they could have found a better actor. I can't see him being able to really sink his teeth into this and it be PG-13. Yeah, I'm going to regret making that joke, probably. Our next uh, topic is Gina Carano. Uh -oh. My second week of doing weekly news and my second week of talking about Gina Carano. This is not a trend I really thought I'd be continuing. Uh, it has been reported that she actually received leaked emails from Disney executives that were possibly accidentally sent to her, informing her that they were going to be getting ready to fire her uh, in regards to all the inflammatory comments she was making about the election, about uh, uh, people, uh, persons of gender identities, basically everything she was saying on Twitter and Disney had had it up to probably... I think last summer when, uh, when she really got into it, the election really uh, threw fuel on the fire. And that's actually right before they had their investors conference where they announced all their solo spinoff uh, Mandalorian series and her character was not included in that. Um, a lot of people were wondering why you didn't give her character a spinoff. Well, this is why they were planning on firing her back in November of last year. So apparently she actually knew probably before any of us that she was going to be getting axed. Um, I, I can't feel sorry for her in any way. I mean, the things that she said on Twitter, I think she's put out some type of lame apology. It's just, that's how you feel. That's how you feel. But I can't think that you would want to know you would put that stuff out there and think that you're still going to keep a job with Disney. I mean, granted, it is Star Wars, but it's Disney. You're not going to say the things you said and bring that back on them. So, I mean, that's how you feel. Fine. But just know that you can't have heavy Twitter fingers like that and expect people not to feel sorry for you when you get fired from your job from the most family friendly IP out there. I mean, we just talked about Disney only doing one rated R MCU film. The things you were saying were pretty inflammatory. So... Uh, once again, Gina Carano just finds herself as the uh, the donkey of uh, 2021 so far. And our next topic, we are talking about my favorite show. Well, I say my second favorite show. My first show is last week, with uh, last week tonight with John Oliver. My second favorite show 
is Rick and Morty. This is good news. Um, it has been reported that the writers on Rick and Morty are now starting on season seven with the writing. The fact that we're still probably seven months away from season five really does give me hope that we are on a good trajectory to keep this yearly schedule coming out. Um, if you're a Rick and Morty fan, it hasn't been easy the last couple years. Uh, I mean, the show started in 2013. It is now 2021 and we've only had four seasons. We've had a year, a year and a half, and just over a year and a half uh, hiatuses in the actual show. Before season four uh, did premiere, it was announced that uh, our Cartoon Network had signed Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon on to write the show for seven more seasons, giving us 10 in total. Um, I don't know if they're still going to do uh, uh, 10 episode seasons or if they want to play around with that. It actually was for 77 episodes, so they could extend that. Um, it is the most popular show in the history of Cartoon Network. Uh, the ratings they got for that are the highest ratings they've ever gotten for any type of program. It is a part of those um, pop culture zeitgeist. When you're talking about uh, portals, when you're talking about Szechuan sauce, talking about Pickle Rick, I mean, I could go on. Um, so the fact that they're actually now focusing on keeping a yearly release schedule to keep them on track, which was one of the biggest issues between Justin Royal and Dan Harmon, they would get sidetracked and they would just get lazy in the writing process, which is what led to the delays because in an animated show, you can't animate anything unless it's been written first. So uh, the fact that we are getting possibly on schedule, um, I'm excited. Um, I love Rick and Morty. Um, I just hope the fact that they're writing so far ahead of time now that by the time it does come out, it isn't dated comedy. Um, granted, Rick and Morty doesn't usually do anything too topical. They don't date themselves pretty much. But the fact that it's 2021 and they're trying to write season seven and we still haven't gotten season five, season seven, if we're staying on this same uh, release window, wouldn't come until around 2023, the end of 2023 at that. So I do hope that the uh, writing doesn't seem stale by that time. I mean, we could have a complete change in the comedy landscape uh, in the next couple years. So, I mean, look at Iron Man 2008, just an example. Films weren't really doing too many franchises or end credit scenes, you know, heavily back then. Uh, Iron Man comes out in 2008 and you have end credit scenes in comedy films. Now, I mean, it's, it's just it, that alone, just, you know, as an example, changed how films were being made. So the fact that they're writing comedy, which can get extremely dated very quickly. Um, I do have faith in the writers. Um, I, I, so I've loved the show. I still rewatch it probably once or twice a week. I'll throw it on an episode. Um, I've gotten multiple people hooked on the show. <laughs> um, so hopefully we're not going to date ourselves too much, but I, I am happy to hear that they are at least two seasons ahead now in the writing for the show so we hopefully can get to those 77 episodes within the next few years. Our main topic today is actually going to be the news that just recently dropped actually only a few hours from me recording this video and that is the title of the Spider-Man 3 film. The newest uh, Spider-Man film that will be coming out later this year and it has been reported. It is said by Disney and Sony that this will release in theaters. The new title for the Spider-Man 3 film is Spider-Man No Way Home. Wow. Uh, previous titles were Spider-Man Homecoming, Spider-Man Far From Home, Spider-Man No Way Home. Uh, I personally love it. Uh, the reveal of it was extremely entertaining. The Actually yesterday, um, well, the day before they released this title, uh, Tom Holland, Spider-Man himself, Zendaya, who plays MJ in the film series, and Jacob Batalon, who plays Ned Leeds, they all actually on their Instagrams released false titles, which plays into the fact of Tom kind of always revealing something that he shouldn't be revealing when it comes to Spider-Man movies. Uh, Spider-Man Phone Home was Tom's, uh, Spider-Man Home Slice was Zendaya's, and, uh, Ned, and uh, Jacob's was Spider-Man Home Wrecker. 
<laughs> so it was a good fun thing. Um, I didn't think they were actually going to reveal it the next day. I thought they were going to just drag these out for a while, but they actually did reveal in a nice video that is uploaded to my actual Facebook page, which is on Facebook chaos, K A Y O S. You should be a uh, subscriber on that page to see when I drop more content because uh, it's not just video form. I do drop a lot of other stuff on that page on Facebook. Um, but yeah, they actually revealed a nice little 38 second video. They did have them coming out of the director, John Watts, who was actually also going to be the director of the, the new Fantastic Four, Four series that uh, they didn't know what the actual title was, that they were getting the runaround and the camera then pans past them as they walk past and then just focuses on a whiteboard that has the actual title Far From uh, No Way Home on it. I don't know why I keep saying Far From Home. It's a good title too. Um, so I'm excited about it. Um, it's actually even a good fan theory that when you actually look at uh, Jacobs, Zendaya's and Tom's uh, fake false titles, each one of the Spider-Man fonts is different. Uh, uh, Jacobs was green. Tom's was red. Zendaya's was kind of uh, kind of a golden hue with the back font. And there is kind of a fan speculation already that these are giving hints to the Sinister Six. Each one of these titles, they didn't have to look different. They chose them to look different. So that may be them tipping their cap. Maybe we're reading a little too much into this as we tend to do, uh, especially now in this pandemic world where we're just starving for new great content coming from Marvel. So uh, that's actually something that um, you want to keep your eye on. Uh, what do you think? Do you like the title? Uh, I, I actually like it. No Way Home does play into the fact that Spider-Man is going to be most likely on the run since the ending of Far From Home. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen it. Um, his, his secret identity has been revealed. Uh, the actual only secret identity in the MCU um, that was still going. Because um, one thing great about the MCU is that it didn't fall into the comic book tropes of having secret identities ever since uh, Iron Man 1 when Tony Stark revealed I am Iron Man nobody's had a secret identity so this is actually really interesting um we do still have um rumors that emma stone and andrew garfield might make appearances it is confirmed that jamie fox and alfred molina will be reprising their roles as electro and dr ock dr octavius doc ock respectively um dr strange is also going to be in the film um benedict cumberbatch is confirmed to be making an appearance in the film so the fact that you have Doctor Strange in the Spider-Man film and it's called No Way Home, uh, possibly some multiverse stuff coming over from WandaVision and the Doctor Strange film. So you want to keep your eye on that. That actually is there all the news I have for you today. What do you think? Uh, do you have any thoughts on everything that's been going on with the Gina Carano uh, scandal over at Disney? Uh, what do you think of Rick and Morty? Do you have a favorite episode? Do you want to see Amelia Clark? cast as Mira in the next Aquaman film and what do you think of the Spider-Man title are you happy with it was it one of the ones you guessed we all pretty much knew home was going to be in the actual title uh, let me know in the comments below um, you can always find me on Facebook at chaos you can find me on Instagram team chaos and Twitter team chaos uh, you can also find me a part of the what kind of black nerd cast is this channel here on youtube and you can find that podcast as well as this podcast on apple anchor spotify and more if you don't find it on your uh, actual platform let me know and i'll make sure i get it to you as always i appreciate you being here with me i hope you're doing well in these crazy times Very responsibly